Uh, hello, hello, lovely people. This is Mark J. Aquaviva with your um, Yoga Solutions live broadcast. So, um, yes, what have we got here? David Holt. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Um, curious about how you would approach squatting, especially as a hip opener. And could you talk about keeping the heels down? <laughs> okay. Um, Right, Can I, how would you approach squatting? Well, I, I would as approach squatting in the same way that I approach everything. Um, as in uh, getting clear about what it is I'm trying to achieve. Um, the, the, the squat itself is not what I'm trying to achieve because um, I can do that. Um, and uh, what, I, what I will be trying to achieve will be less difficulty. And, um, you know, one way of uh, becoming things becoming less difficult is to get strong at doing it in the way that I already do it. But uh, that's not really my bag. My, uh, what, what I'm interested in is finding better ways of doing things, uh, more whole ways of doing things, things uh, ways of doing things that um, bring a freedom to my spine and my breath and a song to my heart. And, no, it's, it's a lot to ask from a posture, but this is my experience, um, is when you approach anything, especially when it's difficult, uh, squatting is essentially difficult uh, because of the shape of the thing. Um, but when you, uh, when you approach anything with this intent to um, remove complications and to make it uh, more pleasurable on a, on a whole kind of way, then um, I think that sets the tone for the yoga. For yoga to arise naturally, you see, um, it's, it's all it's all there in the yamas and niyamas, you know, non, um, a parigraha, non grasping, non grasping of the posture. If you, if you can take out the ambition of the posture and um, apply yourself to things like uh, becoming less violent, um, trying not to steal from your muscles in order to achieve something, uh, more honest with yourself, truthful, all these things. If you apply yourself to a posture with with um, with yoga principles, um, then the outcome is yoga. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that that's the uh, principle. Um, and could I talk about keeping the heels down? Oh, yeah, especially as a hip opener. All right. Well, now we get into the nuts and bolts of it. Let's see. <clears throat> and can I talk about heels down? Yes, I will. Um. Yes. So, um, yes, yeah, let's have a go. Squatting. What is squatting? It is, um, it is when your knees bend and you get closer to the ground. And there's, a, there's an idea um, of shoulds in it. You know, so that's one of the ideas is the heels should stay on the ground. Um, uh, that's an idea. Um, what else is there? Another idea is you're supposed to stay upright. Um, I can't. <laughs> uh, yes, I can't. Um, so, you know, what are these ideas for? Well, I think they're to they're the rules. Uh, and I got this from one of my early, um, one of my first teachers as an adult, um, significant teachers. Um, the, uh, he, he offers rules. This is uh, Peter Blackaby. So he's a great, good, great man. Go, go and work with him if you can. Um, but he keeps things very clear and he offers very precise rules. Now the rules are not it, but the rules are a framework within which you can um, apply yourself to give yourself a particular challenge. Um, the challenge isn't to achieve the the fulfilment of the rule, as in keep your heels down, stay upright. Um, the the rule is there to help you find something different in what you do. Okay, so question as a hip opener well um, what are the hips I, I think the the hips you're talking about are the muscles um, the psoas muscle and other hip flexors okay now as a hip opener um, if you want it to open your hips then you don't use those muscles to hold yourself up which is kind of what a lot of people do they 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 um, brace with the hip flexors and pull into their lower backs so uh, if you're doing that then it's not a hip opener it's a hip tightener, okay? Um, if you want a hip opener, then you have to create the conditions that allow the hips to open, which means uh, not using them for support. So a way of doing that, 
Let's see. Well, the way I would approach squatting, clearly it's something to do with the hips, it's something to do with the knees, because that's where the issues seem to arise in people. Um, so I would be looking at the relationships between where I'm in space and how I'm touching the ground um, with a view to allowing ease between those things at the knees and at the hips. So first off, if you want to join me, um, this, this is a good this is a good way in. If you um, if you lean on your thighs, okay. If you lean on your thighs, then you can sort of relax your back, not not collapse your back, but relax your back. And the result of supporting yourself with your arms allows this space in here to move back and up. And as a result, uh, also because of the propping up of the arms, you won't be needing your uh, hip flexors, the sales muscle, um, to hold the position. So you get a sense of um, what it means to have space between your thighs and you. Okay. Um, what was that? There's an, another explore. Oh, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. How's it going? Exploring the scary, scary valley wave and anything. All right. Well, let's try and find it in squatting. Okay. So what was I saying? Oh, yes. So first off, first off, if your hips are the things that you want to open, and create the conditions for the hips to be open, as in relax your, you've got to take the strain out of the lumbar spine, you've got to take the strain out of the hip flexors, um, because it's the same thing. And if you, can leave, if you can allow the weight a little more on the fronts of the feet, okay, if you can allow the weight a little more on the fronts of the feet, which takes us a kind of strength, but it's not, it's, not a, it's not lifting, it's taking the weight forwards and allowing the feet to respond through the toes. This particular way of working through the feet. It's a bit like if you're sort of digging your toes into the side of a, uh, a mountain or something, okay? So you're working through the toes in that direction rather than pushing down against them, okay? Now that helps you um, find the sort of alignment that travels from through the toes back and up through your joints so that you can, wait, so that, so that you can be um, free in the spine Okay, and then the heels going down wants to be something that happens from the back of the knees to start with. Because if you can drop the heels down from the back of the knees, what you arrive in is support that doesn't rely on tension around the knees. So you get support through the knees from the big toe, from the ball of the foot, as a sort of um, a, uh, a pronation, a super, sorry, a pronation of the foot. It's an inward rotation. And then from the little toe edge, which is, which is an external rotation in the hip, if you can feel that through your toes feeling, then that is your support through your knees. So it's not the knee muscles doing it, okay? And then when the heels drop away from the knees, then you get support that is a sort of release of tension around this joint, around the space in this joint. Okay, that's the start. <sighs> The other half of it, the upward action, is going to be inside here, which you you can support with your hands, and because you're supporting your core away from the legs, you're supporting the pelvis away from the legs, and this is where the hip closing happens, is when the pelvis sort of pushes towards the knees, okay? So if you allow the pelvis to be sort of rested back from the knees, and the space to be rested up away from the legs, then you can get involved with that in the upper body. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite uh, pranayamas to help this is a breath called Sikari. You smile the breath in to the heart and release the breath down away through the sides of you. <sighs> Sikari. Now the, the, the result of that is that you have space away from the legs and with the breathing broad in the heart and across the wings and the release of the breath what happens is the ribs and pelvis come together so you create this space away from the legs and as you release the breath the ribs and pelvis come together I like to do that cross diagonally so you feel supported up through the pelvis so these muscles will be working okay up these ones won't because you're opening your hips Okay, but this is all a result of being on your feet because otherwise you're doing a load of things to the body. So there's the front of the feet, big toe, little toe, through the toes, take a breath wide, 
wide. And then as you release the breath, as well as the heels falling away from the knees, we want the heels falling away with the hips. So it's like dropping your thigh bones on the heels away from you. When you've got that space between the thigh bones and you, when you use the leg, having when you use the legs, having made that space, what happens is the feet go down and the body goes up. It's not so much, it doesn't rely on bracing against the knees, it doesn't rely on bracing against the hips. So it's a play between where your weight is. Front of the feet will give you support through your joints. And then the heels falling away gives you a landing point that allows you to sort of release in a sort of peristaltic wave as the spine is given through the knees to the heels. That base resting down through the heels allows an equal and opposite release up in space through the spine, okay, little by little. At all times, we want the base of the spine to be able to be given to the knees and for the knees to be given to the heels so that we always feel that upward springiness. Of course, if you want to rest in the posture, uh, then by all means, rest. But the thing that will allow you to rest is if you've got this space. Because if you haven't, you'll be in this situation, see? So, and uh, this leads to my, um, oh, it's hard work. Uh, this leads to uh, an understanding of how we make space. It's not an external stretch. It's when the spine is closer to the action. So when the base of the spine is closer to the knees, when the upper spine is closer to the elbows, that we can use our feet and our hands in a way that supports us with space. Space isn't something you get by pulling the body apart. Space is something you get when the spine is no longer being pulled on by your weight or by your breath or by your limbs, your actions. When the spine is at the center of what you do, then releasing the breath through your base rhythmically as you release tension leads to a sort of peristaltic wave that moves through the entirety of the spine, particularly culminating in an opening at the heart. Because when that happens, the release of the breath makes you taller instead of shorter. Oof. <laughs> Blimey. That was hard work. And uh, yes, I have uh, five minutes left. So thank you for that question, David. Um, I hope that answered the question on some level. Let me know, what you, let me know your thoughts. So I have five minutes left. So, yeah, yes, before um, I went live, I, I was thinking about um, why I need questions to teach. And it's because it's exciting, I think. Um, if, if I don't have a question, if, if the person or people that I'm talking to um, hasn't got a personal investment in what they're doing, then I don't really have anything to share apart from what I know. And I, we all know lots of stuff. Um, and that's part of communication. It's very interesting. But, it's not, but yoga isn't about information. It's not about knowing. And um, I didn't know how squatting would go. What I, the only thing I knew was the intention behind it, the investigation behind it. Because um, it's not perhaps something I would do first thing on a Tuesday morning. Um, but because of the question, someone else's curiosity, thank you, David, um, it got me practicing and, and, and investigating. And this is the yoga. This is the yoga. It's when, when you're entirely present to what you're doing and you're investigating what you're doing in a way to 
do yogic things, as in um, apply principles, you know, remove conflict, make things more whole, make things total, um, do things that lead to a quietening of the mind. Because as intense as that was, I, I'm not left with a body that's um, sore from work, overworking particular muscles, you see. Uh, instead, I've, I've, I, I've got a body that's is hot, it's uh, worked hard, but I feel light and I feel energized um, in, a, in a nice way. And I'm, I'm not an exercise person. I would, you know, it's not something I turn to for energy. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's um, me talking about why I like questions. So I think, uh, is that time? No, I've got a few minutes left. Any, any, anything else? Any comments? Anything for anyone to say? <laughs> No? Okay. So what I will say is, um, if anyone's interested, we are um, um, we were doing a workshop up in Edinburgh. So, so any of Scots out there, this weekend coming uh, on Saturday, I'm I'm leading, and Abigail will be doing hands-on help if if you want some help. Um, yes, yes, thank you, Abigail. Um, Yes, and, and uh, yeah, on Saturday, yeah, Saturday I'll be leading, and it, it's a sort of an introduction for um, our training courses. Uh, we, we we run um, yoga development courses. Short co they can be short courses, uh, four six weekends. Um, ten weekends is a foundation, um, and uh, and then it can be it can be taken all the way to a five hundred hour uh, training course if you if you want, or or an advanced sort of uh, diploma for teachers. So anyway, uh, Saturday is working with me, uh, leading, and you get some hands-on from Abigail. If you want to work with um, Abigail directly, uh, she's holding the Sunday for women. It's women only, I'm afraid, but uh, it's about pelvic health, and um, she does a rather uh, special sort of CPD for. Um, it's good for. It's great for teachers, but if you're if you want to resolve pelvic issues, you don't need to be a teacher to attend. Um, so, um, yes, um, book for that if you want to uh, deal with, uh, work with some uh, pelvic health issues, it's uh, for women. Um, and on the same Sunday, I'll be in the treatment rooms um, doing one-to-ones and masterclasses. So, you know, if, if two or three people from Scotland want to uh, book in at the same time, I can do a little masterclass for an hour or so, or um, hour and a half even. Or you can come for a one-to-one, -one, 45 minutes, um, or an hour, whatever you like. And um, it's uh, great for, uh, if you've got something specific you want to deal with, um, I can help. You know, sciatica, knee problems, shoulder problems. The solution might not be what you, um, um, what you think, uh, because if, it was, if the solution was what you, what you think, it would be solved. Um, I have solutions, and they, they are very effective, but it changes how you practice your yoga entirely. So it's a bit of a commitment, but if you want to find a solution to that knee problem, to that sciatic problem, for that hip, those shoulders, whatever it is, if you want to find a solution, come and work with me. Um, one to one is the fast track. If you want to get the ideas, come on the Saturday to work with me and Abigail, or if you want to work directly with, with pelvic stuff for women, Go and work with Abigail on Sunday on the workshop. It's all on the Aquaviva website. Um, do do go and investigate. There's only a few more opportunities to work with one of us before the in, new intake in January. Um, we have courses running um, both in uh, Edinburgh at Santosha, Albert Street. It's, it's a lovely place. I went up there. I was up there last Friday. Incredible, amazing venue. Beautiful, beautifully shanty sort of space. Um, so Edinburgh and uh, Brighton, we do weekends down here at Unit 4, at Pete Blackaby's place. And also we have um, two Wednesdays a month in Hove, and that's more of a, that's a, that's a smaller group, very tight-knit group. Uh, not many places on either that or the um, Brighton, work, uh, Brighton course. There are a few places in Edinburgh. So um, anyway, get in touch. Be lovely to see you. Uh, thank you so much. I hope this was useful. Um, my name is Mark J. Aquaviva, signing off. I will say of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off saying Namaste. Thank you. <laughs>